Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> um, there are a couple of questions from a previous class from Martin. Um, I'll leave one world and enter from another people's other book. When I enter another world, I enter into Kesar of Chochmah. <clears throat> Okay, let me just answer these uh, questions briefly. Um, the first question is, in a prior class, I mentioned three subcategories of Keter. <coughs> Please clarify. Yes, these three subcategories and subcategories of Keter, or three levels within Keter, are called Radla, Reisha de Lois Yada, and Atik Yomin, Atik or Atik Yomin. It's actually, there's two levels there in, uh, in Atik itself. And then Arich Anpin. From top to bottom, Radla, Atik, and Arich. Three levels within Keter. Uh, what those exactly are, I think, is beyond the scope of right now. Um, and as far as Malchut is concerned, yes, if you when, you when you go through Malchut to get to the next world, you arrive at Keter, the world below. That's obviously when one is going from above to below. Um, so that is correct, yes. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, today I'm actually going to talk about a um, the concept, essentially the concept of education, <clears throat> bringing up the next generation, and how it should be, at least in a general sense, according to various Kabbalistic explanations. Now, <clears throat> let's just start off with, there's actually a verse that's coming up in this next uh, week's Torah reading, <clears throat> which is called the, the parasha, the Torah reading of the week is called Toldois. Now the verse uh, begins with um, the words, I'll just say the Hebrew and then I'll, I'll translate it. Va'elo toldos Yitzhak ben Avraham. These are the generations of Isaac, Yitzhak, the son of Avraham, Abraham. Then it continues, Abraham hoilid es Yitzhak. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. So again, these are the generations of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Abraham fathered Isaac, if you would not like to have it that way. So, there's an obvious question over here. Why do we have to repeat ourselves? Uh, we know that the, um, <clears throat> the Torah is very parsimonious. <laughs> very uh, stingy with words, it doesn't use words unnecessarily, and there's obviously many layers hidden within the words, and here we see that in fact, the words are almost repeated, we, we don't understand why, these are the generations of Isaac, the son of Abraham, Abraham was the progenitor, the father, the, um, gave birth to Isaac, why the repetition, so, <clears throat> There are actually several explanations, and we'll use these to understand various approaches towards, or rather the primary approach, what the primary approach should be towards bringing up the next generation, whether it's our children or whether it's just simply people, younger people who are coming up in business ranks or in whatever it may happen to be. <clears throat> so, the Talmud, the Gemara, <coughs> Gemara Baba Metzia, <coughs> says as follows. That there were nations of the world, the nations of the world were sort of poking fun at this whole situation that Sarah gave birth to a child. And she said, all the years, they said like this, all the years that Abraham and, uh, and Sarah were married, she didn't give birth to a child. All of a sudden, after she was taken into the palace of uh, Avimelech, the king of Gerar, the king of this uh, area called Gerar, uh, a couple months later, she's pregnant. It must be he that impregnated her. So that's what the second half of the verse comes to tell us. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was the father. He gave birth to Isaac because Isaac was a carbon copy of Abraham. You could see that this was Abraham's son. There was no question about it that this was Abraham's son. He looked like his father. So that's what the uh, Talmud, uh, that's the way the Talmud explains the repetition. 
<coughs> the repetition is there to tell us an extra added detail that it was Abraham that gave birth to Isaac and not Avimelech as some scoffers were saying. <coughs> There's also a Medrash, Medrash Tanchuma, which says like this, that, that Isaac was very proud of his father and Abraham was proud of his son. The word that's actually used is the word nisater, nitater from the word eter. Eter means a crown. So Isaac crowned himself, so to speak, with Abraham, and Abraham crowned himself with Isaac. Meaning to say, uh, I'm assuming that the sound is okay, right? <clears throat> Meaning to say that um, each was proud of the other. Now, it, it, uh, it's quite a rare thing to see. Um, it often happens that parents are proud of their children, but it's much less rare to find out that, uh, that, that, that children are proud of their parents. Or maybe, maybe in both cases it's rare, I don't know, but um, it can often happen. Yeah, I'm recording, yes, yes. <laughs> I am recording. Thank you for reminding me, but I am. <clears throat> Um, okay, so, <clears throat> not till you get older, yeah, not till you get older, you're proud of your, um, yeah, I'm proud of your parents and so on, yeah, okay. So the Medrash, the, uh, the Medrash, yeah, the Medrash says that um, Yitzhak was proud of his father, that's why it says that these are the generations of Isaac, the son of Abraham, because he prided himself on the fact that he was the son of Abraham. His father, Abraham, was for him a source of tremendous personal pride and satisfaction. I had a father like this. And likewise, Abraham, Abraham pr pr was, was proud. He prided himself on the fact that he had a son such as Isaac. And that's why it continues and it says, Abraham gave birth to Isaac because he was so proud of his son Isaac. We'll see the significance of this in a more, in a deeper sense uh, shortly. And let's just get through the basic explanations. Along comes uh, Kabbalah and Hasidic teachings. And they say that this verse is actually coming to teach us about our divine service, what it's all about. Abraham generally, generally represents the aspect of what is called chesed, kindness. If you have a look at a chart of the Sefirot, which I didn't uh, put up before the class, but I should have, um, I think everyone has a chart, so you'll just take it from there. <coughs> um, Abraham represent, represents the Sfira of Chesed. In fact, there's a uh, classic Hasidic work, one of the early, early um, Hasidic, I'm uh, sorry, Kabbalistic works, one of the very early Kabbalistic works, which is called Sefer HaBahir, which actually was written even before the Zohar. Uh, Sefer HaBahir. And in Sefer HaBahir, it says that um, the attribute of kindness, of chesed, of the world of Atzilut, that's a very, very extremely high level, was, so to speak, jealous of Abraham's work down here in kindness to the extent that, obviously it's not meant literally, but we have to understand the concept. Conceptually, the Sefer Bari says that the attribute of kindness, the divine attribute of kindness in the very lofty world of Atzilus, of Atzilut, was jealous of Abraham and said, since he has been alive in this world and doing his work, I have nothing to do. I have no, I have no place. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm basically, I'm, I'm not functioning. I mean, um, um, uh, in a state of um, quietude or um, non-operational right now, let's put it that way. Why? Because Abraham, because of the tremendous kindness he showed to everybody, it's the, uh, the, <clears throat> the Midrash tells, and it's clear from the verses, that Abraham used to seek out people to come and participate in a meal. He would, he would go and seek them out and bring them in, bring them into his tent. His tent had four doors. There were four openings to the tent so that 
a, a, a person coming from any direction would be able to see that there was an open door <coughs> and they could come in. And even when he was in tremendous pain after his circumcision, he was an old man already, 99 years old. Uh, after, even even at such a time, he was sitting on the um, uh, at the um, crossroads and waiting for people to come. He was waiting to see people to um, uh, to invite them into his tent. So, the kindness that he showed people, and the love that he showed people, that was exemplary of Abraham. That's what he was. He embodied love to such an extent that the Sphira, which represents love, was sort of in abeyance. It, it, it didn't have, was non-functional at that time. It didn't have anything to do, so to speak. Whereas Isaac was, in fact, exactly the opposite. There's also a verse that says, Tita in emes liyako chesed la Avraham. Chesed, the concept of chesed, kindness, goes to Abraham. Whereas Isaac was completely the opposite quality. His quality was not to be involved with people. His quality was the quality sort of of a scholar, a person who digs deep. One of the stories that's told about, uh, about um, Isaac is that he dug wells, which means he had to dig down very, very deep. It wasn't that he went to find water that was visible. He dug down in order to find the water, which uh, means, essentially, in a, in, a, in a deeper sense, it means that that's, that that was his whole way of operating. His way of operating was to dig down, dig down deep. He was a researcher. He was a thinker. He was a man of prayer. Prayer is an internalized thing. It's not going out in order to bring others in. Prayer is an internal search, an internal... Um, expression. But yeah, it's a Yitzhak la Suach Basade. He went, he went to pray and to meditate in the field. So he was a very meditative, prayerful person. And he wasn't a person who uh, was outgoing. He was in, in fact, he was completely the opposite of Abraham. Abraham was a very outgoing, bringing people in and so on and so forth. And Isaac was one who went deep within himself. He did not go out to people. We don't see anywhere that he invites people in. To the extent that there's an interesting, um, <clears throat> there's an interesting uh, observation that the followers of Abraham, after he passes away, Abraham's followers are not mentioned ever again. It's talked about the, the, the souls that they made in Haran, the souls that he and Sarah made in Haran, this place called Haran. We don't hear from them again. We don't hear about them again. They disappeared. Where were, where were they? What happened to them? So one of the explanations that's given is after Abraham and Sarah, Sarah first and then Abraham later passed away, Isaac, Yitzchak, then became the leader of the generation. But since his way of operating, since his way of doing things was so completely different from Abraham, there were many people that said, no, we can't, like, this is, this is not what we were taught, this is not what we received from our, uh, from our forebears, from, from, this is not what we received from Abraham, so it can't be right, it's not, it's not for us, it's not, it's not the real thing, it's not what... We can't, uh, we can't live like this, and therefore they kind of disappeared. They went, you know, on their own way. They, 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 uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't stand the change. There's an interesting story that is told, actually, about one of the Rebbe's of Gur, called the Guru or the Gera Rebbe. So when the previous Gera Rebbe passed, passed away, so they were there, there was a new Rebbe, one of his sons, was became the... Um, became the Rebbe, became the, the leader of the Gerah Hasidim. <coughs> and he made a number of changes in the way things were run. One of them being the times that the, uh, the study hall, um, uh, the students in the study hall in yeshiva, were, he made changes in those times, made changes in times of prayer and various other things. 
um, and the his his secretary or his um, um, the person who sort of implemented his um, uh, what it is that he wanted the, the, the his secretary let's call him was the same secretary as his father so uh, the secretary um, so the secretary said to to the new Rebbe, he said, uh, he said, I don't understand why you're changing everything. It was good enough for your father. Why is it not, why is it not good enough for you? So the Gary Rebbe, the Gary Rebbe's are known to have very like uh, sharp wit and also <laughs> sometimes a very sharp tongue also. So uh, the Gary Rebbe said, uh, I'll give you two answers. One answer is, if God saw fit that my father's way of doing things would still be the right way of doing things, would still be the proper way to do things, so he would still be here. He wouldn't have been taken away from us. The fact that he was taken away means it's time for a new way of doing things. That's the first answer. The second answer is usually when there's a new Rebbe, when there's a new Hasidic leader, they usually change the secretaries. <laughs> So, so that shut him up, and uh, there was no further discussion uh, on uh, on the matter uh, again. But we see that from generation to generation, uh, there are changes. Abraham is one type of thing, uh, one type of person. He approached everything from the Kav HaChesed, from the side of Chesed, of kindness, of love, whereas Isaac approached things from the from the aspect of depth. Or, um, as the Zohar says in various other works, from the aspect of awe, awe of God. He had tremendous awe, or had tremendous awe. Uh, Abraham was tremendous love, love and awe. So Hasidic texts go on to say that this verse is actually coming to tell us what the procedure is to come to love and awe properly. Where do you start and where do you finish? So in love and awe, there's two, each, of, each have two levels, love and awe, A-W-E. There's lower awe and, high, and higher awe and lower love and higher love. Now, the verse comes to tell, tell us the following, that it says these are the generations of Isaac, Yitzhak, that's the lower level of awe, Ben Avraham, the son of Abraham, the lower level of love. So from the lowest level of awe, or what some people call the fear of God, or the awe of God, one can come to a level of love, a lower level of love. From that lower level of love, one then gets to the highest level of awe. Of awe. Sorry, from the lowest level of love, one gets then to a higher level of love. And from the higher level of love, one gets to the higher level of awe. So again, it goes awe, Love, higher love, higher awe. That's what the verse says. Yitzhak ben Avraham, Isaac the son of Abraham. Isaac was, is the lowest level, the level of awe, which is a precondition to coming to the love of God. Then there is Abraham, which is the love of God. Then Avraham, holy is Yitzhak, Abraham, the higher level of love gives birth to the higher level of awe. Okay. So, based on this, we now um, have a question. And the question is, how could it be that Abraham, love, gave birth to and was so proud of his son who represents all, exactly the opposite quality. Abraham, outgoing, full of love for the creator, for, for, for his fellow man. Isaac, all for the creator, almost completely ignored his fellow man. Although I, 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 we can't say that, 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 that they, they completely ignored other people, but it wasn't his, certainly was not his main focus by any means. So um, his main focus was internal discovery, internal digging deeper and deeper and deeper into his own soul. So how could it be 
that Abraham and Isaac could even get along. They were so completely and absolutely different. How did, how did it come out that Abraham was so proud of Isaac and Isaac was so proud of his father, Abraham? How these two qualities, how are they able to work together? So one of the uh, ways of approaching this, one of the ways of understanding this is as follows. <clears throat> When it comes to bringing up the next generation, educating our children, the proper methodology, the proper approach is not to micromanage how they grow up. Yes, on the outside, Isaac is going to look like Abraham in external features, in external things, the son is probably going to be like the father, but he might be a completely different personality inside. <clears throat> so how are we going to do this? So teachings explain that when educating the next generation, educating our children, what we have to do is set the general goal, where it is that they have to move towards. What's the target? What's the ultimate goal that we want them to be able to achieve? How they get there does not depend on us. We can't put them on the path and micromanage their steps every way to the goal. We set the goal and the child, the next generation, has to find their way to that goal. They have to find their way in their own way. This is what our sages tell us, in fact. There's actually a, um, um, it's a verse. Educate the child according to his way. Even when it's so that even when he is old, he will not swerve aside from it. He will not abandon it. Educate the child according to his way, so that even when he is old, he will not stray from that path. In other words, Educate the child in the big picture. What's the big picture? How he gets there depends on who he is. Not shouldn't depend on who we are. It has to depend on who the child is. Educate the child according to his way. Let him or her, the child, choose how it is that they're going to get to the goal. Maybe they won't get there initially. Maybe they'll stumble. They'll trip over... Um, barriers or stones in the way or whatever it is, stumbling blocks. <coughs> that can happen. You give them encouragement. You can make suggestions. But we can't micromanage how people get to where they get to. Why? Because very often the soul of our, the souls of our children are so completely different from the way that we are that if we try and put them along the path that we're walking on, it's just completely not uh, the word in Hebrew, matim. It doesn't fit. It's not, it's not their path. Educate the child in his path, in his way. Now the Zohar comes along and explains that, giving a, a new sort of uh, interpretation of the verse that we started off with. The, the, the Zohar says like this, that Abraham, as we uh, explained last week, Abraham represents the soul. Sarah represent, represents the body, the physical world. Abraham represents the spiritual world, the soul. So Abraham gives birth to Yitzchak, to Isaac. And why was Isaac called by the name he was called? Why was he called Yitzchak? Tzchok asa li Elohim. God made me, he made laughter for me. God made laughter for me. So when the soul, give, how does the soul give birth? What does the soul give birth to? When the soul is doing what its duty, what its function is in the world, when it's doing, what, when it's walking on its path, that gives rise to laughter. That gives rise to joy, to enjoyment, to tanug, to delight. When a person is going on his path, the one that was meant for that soul from the beginning, that is a state of um, 
that is a state of joy. That is a state of, 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 uh, of being uplifted. When Abraham gave birth, because he was going on his path, he gave birth to joy, Yitzhak. And Yitzhak also, Isaac, prided himself on the fact that he was the son of Abraham, he was the son of Abraham, because he was able, since Abraham had such delight in his son, even though the son was polar opposite of what he was, but he let him go in his way, he educated him according to who the son was. So he was, he had tremendous, um, he had tremendous pride and tremendous joy in who his father was. His father understood that you have to let me, you have to let me come to things by myself. You can't point out everything and show me what my next step has to be. I have to find it for myself. I have to go there myself. I have to walk my path. I can't walk yours necessarily. The goal is all the same goal. The goal is set. Both of them are walking towards the goal, but each of them takes their own path. And that is um, the message behind these are the generations of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Isaac, a completely different quality, was nevertheless uh, the son of Abraham. The op he's on the opposite quality, but he was allowed to live. He was allowed to move forward. He was allowed to do what it is that only Isaac could do and Abraham couldn't. And Abraham did what it was that Abraham could do and Isaac couldn't. And that is how we try to instill in our children in the coming generation the love for moving forward towards the ultimate goal that we all serve, which is the revelation of godliness on earth, but giving every person, every individual, his ability, his own his own uh, method, his own path in achieving ultimately that goal. And that is what it is all about.